Okay, this part should be pretty simple. I've got it setting where it's propped up on the GPS. GPS won't lock up in the basement, especially oriented like it is. But basically, that's all I'm doing is plugging in the USB port. I just took it outside and played with it on an auto mission. So I'd say the first thing, well, let's go in here and look real quick. I'm using Windows 7 Professional and I'm using the 64-bit version. I, I haven't tried it on any other because I've only had it a year and I've been using this operating system for over a year. I might suggest, well first of all, you're going to have to find it in your COM ports right here. And there it is. So if you don't find it in your COM ports, we'll have to talk about that. But what you might want to do right now is just go in and uninstall it. And of course, when you uninstall it, it should disappear. But now I have to reboot. So I'll see you on the other side of the reboot. Okay, we're booting back up and I didn't unplug it. So it came up searching the internet for the Windows update for that device. Uh, I frequently do that when drivers don't work. I just uninstall them and let them reinstall from the internet automatically. 43 years of computer work, brother. So, we'll sit here. Sorry about the delay. When my, oops. <laughs> When my computer first boots up, it's got a lot of things to run. It's kind of a big system. <laughs> and this is going to slow down the update even more. I shouldn't have done that Adobe update. Sorry about that. So it's... Looking for the driver software for the Pixhawk on the internet. Good, that finished. That should speed it up. And there it is. Ready to use. That's all you would have to do, and what I would suggest to do if it's not in that driver section. So, first of all, just plug it in, see if it comes up, powers up from the USB and then go into the device manager and the COM ports and you'll need to have it there first before you need to do any mission planner, queue ground control, anything like that. Now you could have a conflict. Usually when they self-install uh, they don't always, but you can come in here to port settings advanced and you can change the COM port. Uh, let me change it to, oh, I'll just pick a COM5 or something. Uh, what was it, 10? And now it shows it COM10 in the device manager. Until it's in that device manager, mission planner won't matter. But now let's go into mission planner. And then we'll look in our drop down list here, and there it is. I can click on it. Uh, and it's ready to go. Let me make sure the rover software is still installed. It real quick. Sorry about this delay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's still Rover. Now you have to be disconnected right there to install firmware, but until it's in the device manager, there's no sense of loading any. Oh, look at that, kind of hanging up on battery capacity. Oop, failed to update. And which means I probably chose the wrong COM port. So let's back out. We'll go back to Device Manager. 
I actually have some utilities for seeing which COM ports are in use, but I just finger bone that one real quick. Let's go back in advanced ones to the COM 10. Uh, four is in use. I don't know one, two, and three are in use, but let's go with five for kicks and grands. Computers lie frequently. Leave me 43 years of working with them. So it needs to be in this list before you do anything with any other software. Now let's go into Mission Planner. It reports here. Proper COM port. I click Connect. Toom. Yeah, that's a good port. That's how quick it should load. Uh, I'll continue to try to help. Uh, do you live anywhere near North Carolina? <laughs>